Welcome to Lecture 20, Center of Gravity, Centroid, Theorems of Pappus. In this lecture, we'll be discussing the center of gravity of a body, the centroid, the centroid of an area, composite bodies, and the theorems of Pappus. We established in Lecture 1 that a rigid body or a body is composed of a large number or infinite number of particles. And remember, particles have mass, but we can neglect their size. So if we have a body located uh, within a gravitational field, then each of the particles in the body will have a weight and will uh, establish, call the weight of each particle dw. Now the center of gravity is a point which locates the resultant weight of a system of particles or a solid body. Now think parallel force system here when we were doing, uh, back when we were doing uh, equivalent force systems, resultant forces. And we normally abbreviate the center of gravity CG by the letter CG. And we're showing the center of gravity in this second figure here as point G. And it's not uncommon just to see that labeled CG. Now from the definition of a resultant force, the sum of the moments due to individual, individual particle weight about any point is the same as the moment due to the resultant weight located at G. So think about that. That's saying that the sum of all of the moments caused by the infinite number of uh, particles in the body about any point, whether it's on the body or not, is the same as the moment due to the resultant weight located at G. And again, we did uh, this back in uh, several lectures ago when we were looking at uh, parallel force systems. We can determine the location of the center of gravity of a body measured from any axis, in our case, the X, Y, or Z axis, by equating the moment of the weight of the body, W, about the axis, and again, this is either going to be the x, y, or z axis, by equating the moment of w about the axis to the sum of the moments of the weights of the particles about the same axis. Okay, so let's see what we're talking about here. So we're saying that here's our x, y, z uh, in a figure, in this figure here, the first figure, our x, y, z uh, coordinate system and we have some generic body and here is a particle with weight dw and the xyz coordinates of that particle are shown by x tilde y tilde and z tilde, okay? So we're saying that that particle, which has a weight of dw, is located at point x tilde, y tilde, and z tilde. And our center of gravity in figure two here is located at g and the total weight of the body, which is the summation of all those differential weights or DWs, is represented as W, force W acting through G. And G is located at X bar, Y bar, and Z bar. And that's just, uh, we just um, 
show that with a uh, those variables or those letters with a a line over the uh, over the letter and it's read as bar x bar y bar z bar so what we've said is let's look at moments let's let's equate the moments that are acting about the y-axis okay here's the moment of the weight of the entire body about the y-axis it's going to be w times the distance perpendicular distance of w from the y-axis which is x bar so the moment of that weight force about the y-axis is x bar w and we said that that has to be equal to the summation of the moments of all the individual particles that ha all have this weight dw and they'll have various x tildes every one of them will have a different x tilde and then but x tilde times dw in general is the moment of any of those individual particles about the y-axis so if we sum those by integrating then we can set that summation or integral on the right side of the equation equal to what we have on the left side of the equation now if we express the weight of the body as the summation of all of the weights of the particles which we've uh, said each of those particles has a weight of dw so if we sum those all up we can write that as the integral of dw and then going back to this equation I know it's getting a little busy here we replace this with the summation of all the dw's and then we take that to the other side of the equation into the denominator on the right side of the equation we end up with this which leaves us with x bar the location of the uh, uh, the value of the x coordinate of the location of the center of gravity of the body uh, isolated on the left and it's equal to the sum of all of the moments the sum of the moments of all of the particles about the y-axis divided by the weight of the body which we can also express as the sum of all the differential weights and this works the same way for finding y bar and z bar now to calculate the coordinates of the center of mass of a body we use those same equations that we developed on the previous slide and we can replace the w the weight with the mass and use those equations to calculate the center of mass of the body here we just took m and substituted it in every for everywhere there was a w
And we can also use these equations to find the coordinates of the centroid of a volume, the centroid of an area, or the centroid of a length by replacing W with volume, area, or length, uh, respectively. So we'll be using those equations, or at least two of them, uh, the equations for X bar and Y bar, to calculate the centroid uh, of an area uh, in the next slide. But first, let's formally define centroid. We've used these a little bit in our distributed loading, and I think that everybody uh, uh, has a pretty good idea what a centroid is, but let's define it formally. So the centroid uh, denoted by the letter C here in these figures is a point defining the geometric center of an object. And the second bullet here, the centroid will coincide with the center of mass or the center of gravity only when the material that the body is made of is homogeneous, meaning that its density or specific weight is constant throughout the body. And if an object has an axis of symmetry, then the centroid of the object lies on that axis. Now here they've shown that in this third figure here, they've shown the centroid, they've labeled it G, which they're saying is also the center of gravity of that object. And that would be true if that object, uh, the material uh, used in that object uh, is homogeneous uh, throughout the, the object. Let's look at how we can determine the centroid of an area using the equations uh, that we established previously in the lecture. So the, the centroid of an area that lies in the xy plane and is bounded by the curve y equals f of x, which is shown here, can be determined using the equations established previously for X bar and Y bar. We don't need Z bar, we're just working in two dimensions. And we're working with areas now, so we're gonna substitute area for weight. Okay, and now X tilde is going to be the X coordinate of that differential area and y tilde is going to be the y coordinate of that differential area. So we set these up by establishing a differential area that is vertical for uh, this would be for the to solve for x bar and Notice that the height of the differential area is y. The width is dx. And the location of the centroid of the differential area, x tilde, is just going to be x and y tilde is going to be y over two. This is just a rectangle. DA is just a rectangle. So its centroid is at its, uh, uh, is along the axis of symmetry, axes of symmetry of the triangle in X and Y, of the rectangle in X and Y. Okay. So let's move over to Y bar. And for y bar, we, we would set up the differential area horizontally 
So it has a length of X. It has a height of DY. And it's a rectangle again. And its centroid is located at X over 2 and Y. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide that has some tips for setting up these integrations. Here are some steps to determine the centroid of an area when you're using the equations and method discussed on the previous slide. The first thing you're going to do is set up uh, an appropriate differential element, dA, uh, and decide if you're going to use a, uh, a, a vertical element, meaning you'll be integrating uh, in X, or a horizontal element, meaning you'll be integrating in Y. So if your equation, your function is given as Y equals X squared plus one, you have Y in terms of X, uh, you would use a vertical rectangular element. If, on the other hand, you have, it's easier to express X in terms of Y, then that's when you, you'd use a horizontal uh, element. Express the element, DA, uh, the differential area, the rectangle, in terms of the differentiating element, DX or DY. If you have a vertical uh, element, rectangle representing dA, then the width is dx. You're going to integrate uh, with respect to x. If it's a horizontal element, you're going to be integrating with respect to y. Determine the coordinates of the centroid of the rectangular element, the differential element dA, in terms of x and y. Remember on the previous slide, when we had the vertical element, the X coordinate of the centroid, X tilde was just X. The Y coordinate of that vertical element was uh, Y tilde was Y over two. And then as you, before you integrate, Express all the variables and integral lim integral limits in your in the formula using either x and y, depending on whether the differential element is in terms of dx or dy. So obviously, if you're integrating with respect to x, you have that dx that um, everything needs to be in terms of x, or if you're integrating with respect to y, everything needs to be in terms of y. Now let's look at determining the center of gravity for a composite body. A composite body is one which consists of a series of particles or body, such as shown in the figure. So now we're not dealing with an infinite number of particles. We're dealing with some finite number of particles or, or bodies um, that form a system. And the net or the resultant weight is given by I sort of crossed it out here, the sum of the weights of all the bodies. But now we, you know, in this example, we have three. So we're, we're not going to integrate. We're going to just add those, sum those manually. And if we sum the moments about the y-axis, in other words, if we want to determine x bar, then this equation should look familiar. We're just doing it manually now. We're not, um, since we have a, a, a finite number of particles or bodies, then we can say that just what we established, established earlier, that the moment of the net weight or the resultant weight about the y-axis is equal to the moments of the individual particles or body 
or bodies about the y-axis. And we're just using our, our bookkeeping here. It's just, we're just keeping track of our, our, our uh, different uh, particles or bodies and their distances from the y-axis with body one, body two, et cetera. Now we can rewrite that last equation on the previous slide as this. Remember the summation of the individual weights of the particles or bodies is equal to just that resultant weight, which was over here on this side of the equation in the previous uh, on, the, uh, on the previous slide, and we just substituted uh, the summation of all the weights for W, R, and brought it over to this side, just like we did a few slides ago for the, uh, when we were using uh, integration in these equations. Okay, and Y bar, Z bar is similar. And what we're going to be doing with these is using these equations to determine the centroid of a composite area by replacing the W's with A's. In other words, we're not going to be finding the, uh, we're, we're not going to be finding the, the center of gravity. We're going to be finding the, um, centroid uh, of an area and of composite actually a composite area so we're going to use these equations at the bottom here we're going to be working in just x and y and we're going to be using these equations to find the centroids of composite areas Using the equations at the bottom of the previous slide, we can determine the centroid of a more complex area by considering it as a composite area that's composed of simple shapes such as rectangles, triangles, semicircles, circles, etc. And for these simple shapes, we know the location of their centroids, or we can look them up pretty easily. And we also know uh, how to calculate their areas, or we can look up those formulas pretty easily. And by knowing their centroids and areas, we can uh, apply those uh, two equations on the previous slide to pretty easily determine the location of the centroid for the more complex composite body that's composed of multiple simple shapes. Here are the steps to determine the centroid of a composite area. The first thing you're going to do is to divide the overall area into smaller pieces that are known simple shapes. Remember that holes are considered as negative area and holes in this case aren't necessarily just circular they could be circular they could be semicircular they could be square rectangular triangular so on next make a table with the first column for shape number so in other words if you have uh, you've divided your larger area into four shapes you might have the shapes numbered one, two, three, four, or A, B, C, D. Use the second column to record the area of those shapes. Remember, we're, you're, you have simple shapes, so you'd be calculating the area of a triangle or the area of a rectangle or the area of a semicircle. Then set aside the next two columns for the moment arms, X tilde and Y tilde. And then 
set aside a few more columns for recording the results of uh, simple intermediate calculations that you're going to be making. Mainly, you're going to need to multiply for each of the simple shapes, you're going to need to multiply x tilde by the area and y tilde by the area. So you should have two more columns uh, for those results. The third thing you, you'll do is to fix the coordinate axis uh, and determine the coordinates of the centroid of each piece, of each shape that you've uh, uh, broken the uh, larger area into. And after you have uh, those in your table, go ahead and do the calculations. Mainly, you're going to need to multiply for each shape. You're going to need to find x tilde times a, put that in a column, y tilde times a, put that in a column. The last thing is to sum the appropriate columns to find the sum of all the x tilde times a, a's, and the sum of all the y tildes times their respective areas, and the sum of the overall area. Then you're going to use the equations that we established earlier to calculate uh, x bar and y bar. Now let's look at the first theorem of Pappus, which states that the area of a surface of revolution equals the product of the length of the generating curve and the distance traveled by the centroid of the curve in generating the surface area. So here is the length of the curve, L, and here's the centroid of that curve, which we can calculate using those equations established earlier in the lecture by substituting length for, um, by substituting L for W. And so what this theorem says is, is that that surface area of revolution A is going to equal, let's start with L, that's the easiest one to see, the length of the curve L times the distance traveled by the centroid of the curve in generating the surface area. Okay, so to find that distance, we need to know R bar, which is the perpendicular distance from the axis of revolution to the centroid of the generating curve. And then theta, which needs to be in radians, which is the angle of revolution. So if, for instance, if the curve is rotated 360 degrees, then theta is going to be 2 pi. If the curve is rotated 180 degrees, theta would be pi. So you um, can use this equation by, now that you know a little bit more about centroids, and um, you can use this equation to find uh, surface area of revolution. The second theorem of Pappus states that the volume of a body of revolution equals the product of the generating area and the distance traveled by the centroid of the area in generating the volume. So this is similar to the first theorem, but now we're de dealing with volumes. So here's the area that's being 
revolved. Okay. And R bar is the distance from the is the perpendicular distance from the axis of revolution to the centroid of the generating area. And then theta again is the angle of revolution measured in radians. So you can use this equation uh, if you can calculate the centroid of, of the area to find the uh, the volume of a body uh, of revolution.